Shove it, man! H A W K, all night, all day. Now get ready to hear me spray. It's Ring of the Hawk season four, the show where we watch back a wrestler's short run of a company, and at the end we shove them a final grade to see if they can do the J O B for the H A W K. Today's video was also a Patreon request by Lottie McCulloch. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. And of course, okay, it's Killer Cross. He's wrestled everywhere but Oz. Yes, today it's the second time today's guy is going to compete on Ring of the Hawk after we watched his NXT run a while back, and it was fairly decent. So let's find out if this run that's coming at you from 2018 before his NXT run is any better. Cross debuts in TNA as a fake police officer attacking Petey Williams. Maybe he mistook him for Scott Steiner. Match 1, Impact, Killer Cross vs Falapar. Cross and Falabar collide to start off our match. They smash together like morons, and after Bar delivers a chop, Cross starts his onslaught of assault. Bar with some more chops in the corner on Cross, and he's set up for a corner splash. Cross lays him out with Valaria. Killer Cross invites Bar to continue his strikes in the corner as he begins to grow angrier and angrier. Cross moves to the side of Bar and drops Valor on his head with a doomsday saito with impressive strength. Cross locks on an MMA style choke on Bar and the big man taps out. Killer Cross did look impressive in his debut, knocking down a 400 pound monster like Fala Bar in less than three minutes. Pretty unheard of. After the match, KM tries to save his big friend, but Cross starts choking him out as well. Another big guy going down. All of a sudden, Petey Williams comes down to the ring for chair and smacks Cross in the back with it. Cross is not affected at all as Petey takes another swing and eventually he dazes Cross to the outside by tossing the chair at his face. Let's give it a C, not a bad debut. Cross won it and he defeated a super heavyweight and he was able to hold his own against three opponents. Actually, let's give it a B. Match 2, Impact, Killer Cross vs Petey Williams. Cross and Petey begin to feed each other out with some MMA style strikes and manoeuvres from both of them. Cross catches Petey off the rebound Irish whip and drives him into the corner. Petey and Cross now take turns roaring at each other, and Petey starts firing away some kicks. This is to no avail though, as Cross tosses him away of an exploder suplex. Petey throws a chop, but Cross expertly catches it with his shoulder and gives Williams a half and half suplex. Petey responds by giving Cross a smack, and this causes Cross to charge and go shoulder first into the turnbuckle. Petey nails a drop kick to a draped killer Cross on the ropes and a slingshot code breaker to daze him, and then he follows up with a Turtle World DDT. The Canadian hero looks for his patented destroyer, but Cross maneuvers him into a doomsday Saito. Cross locks on the same hold that he had on Bar before, and it's now being called the Cross Jacket. More like the Cross Smack It. Petey is clearly out of it, and the ref tries to signal that the match is over, but Cross threatens the ref and our match continues. William somehow survives and he's demanding that Cross keeps fighting him. Cross lets Petey try the destroyer. He doesn't have enough strength to do it though, and he reverses it into an Alabama slap. Cross again locks in the Cross Jacket, but Petey passes out to the pain. Not bad, Cross certainly devastated Petey in this match, he was able to get some spotlight about his moveset and character. Let's give it a C. After the match, Cross leaves his symbol on Petey's chest and he leaves the ring. Match 3, Impact Redefined. Killer Cross and Austin Aries vs Eddie, Slapnut Edwards and Moose. It looks like this match is going to start out as a handicap match as Moose is nowhere in sight. Cross tries to attack Edwards before it can begin, but Edwards gets the upper hand with some chops and a kick before Cross shuts him down with a spine buster. Edwards pushes Ares off the apron into the barricade and he's set up for a dive, but then Cross cuts him off with a knee before he can lift off. Cross tags back in and drives his boot into Slapnut's chest. Ares and Edwards clash in a battle for a few minutes until Edwards hits a blue thunder bomb and Cross breaks up the pin. Edwards tries to come back into the ring but Cross stops him on the outside and delivers an exploder on the floor. Moose now makes it up and he's all bandaged up and ready to go to war as he gets in the corner. Austin Ares goes for a tag but Killer Cross betrays him and drops down from the apron. Moose looks to get his hands on Ares. Out of nowhere, Moose suddenly spears Eddie Edwards. It seems to be a big ruse as Ares tosses out the referee and Moose starts beating the hell out of Edwards. Cross, Moose and Ares all begin to triple team Edwards. This might be my favourite match of all time. They then wrap a chair around his head and they hold it against him on the ring post as they swing the chair against his face. It looks like we've got a faction forming, but overall the match involving Cross... He did nothing at all really. Great at a D. Match 4, Impact. Killer Cross and Moose versus Eddie Edwards and Johnny Impact. Moose and Slapnut Edwards will start our tag team encounter. Okay, never mind. Killer Cross tags right in. So Johnny Impact and Killer Cross will start out. Cross looks for an exploder suplex early on, but Johnny counters and Cross starts grabbing at Impact's face. Impact gets a drop kick on Cross and Moose tags back in. There's a lot of in and out tags from both sides, but eventually Carrion Cross hits a Northern Light suplex on Johnny, but then he bridges into a Fisherman's Buster. Moose distracts Edwards on the outside off an Irish whip and then Cross takes advantage with a spine buster. Cross locks in a cloverleaf on Edwards, but soon after he's able to get a rope break. 
Johnny sticks Cross up on the rope and Edwards hits an Indiguri and then Impact slides under Cross for a German suplex. Impact looks to follow it with a manoeuvre from the top but Cross rolls out of the way and they both hit clotheslines for a double down. Later on Cross stops a pinfall attempt by Edwards and lifts him up for an exploder. Impact follows Cross to the outside and the Irish whips Johnny to the barricade but he climbs up into the crowd and Cross is stunned by this. He's never seen parkour before. Impact dives off but he rolls through a clothesline and then takes full advantage by hitting Moonlight Drive on the floor. Meanwhile Moose tries fighting both opponents two on one but then Cross returns he slides him with an elbow on Impact. Slap nuts with a kick, Moose with a kick on Edwards and then Impact World Champion Austin Aries comes into the ring and Impact steals the world title from Aries and hits him with it. Cross takes advantage of that distraction and hits a Doomsday Saito on Impact. Edwards is being a dick though and he hits Cross with a kendo stick behind the referee's back and then Moose collides into Edwards with a spear for the victory. The match started off a bit slow but it did get better around the end. I especially like the parkour spot from Johnny. That was a cool little touch to the match. Sadly it wasn't our guy. But yeah, there were some good impressive moves here. Let's give it a beat. Match 5, Impact, Killer Cross, Austin Aries and Moose versus Eddie, Slapnut Edwards, Valabar and Johnny Impact. Killer Cross and Johnny Impact will start out this 6 map. Cross hits an exploder suplex right at the beginning into Impact's corner when Valabar tags in. Cross tries a doomsday on Valabar, but Bar says nah and Cross gives him a shot. An exchange on power strikes from Bar and Cross now, but then Bar gets decapitated with Hilarion. Aries and Cross with a double team manoeuvre on Bar into the corner and then Cross with some knee strikes barricaded Bar in the corner. Cross tags back in and plants Bar with DDT, but the big man kicks out at two. Double K now looks for a fisherman suplex on Edwards, but Bar's able to stop him with a super kick. Johnny Impact hits a springboard kick on Aries and then off the ropes for a starship paint, but Cross is able to pull him out of the ring and deliver a doomsday on Impact on the outside. Moose follows that with a power bomb onto the apron and onto Slapnut Edwards. Aries eventually picks up the win for his team after hitting the brain bust on Johnny Impact for the three. This match was pretty boring. The constant tagging in and out was basically nothing happening for 10 minutes until they got to the ending. It dragged a bit. But the ending was decent at least, so it's a D for decent. Match 6, Bound for Glory 2018. Killer Cross and Moose versus Eddie Slapnut Edwards. Tommy Dreamer. This match was set up after Eddie Edwards versus Moose was called off to a, to a DQ for Cross choking out Edwards as a fan at ringside. So now we've got this, and it seems like a worse match. Cross and Moose give Edwards a boot, and then Tommy Dreamer out of nowhere comes to the aid of Slapnuts for Kendo stick in hand. Edwards jumps on Moose and Cross to kick off our tag team match. Tommy Dreamer pours some water into his mouth and spits it into Eddie Edwards' mouth, and then spits it in Moose's mouth. I cannot believe I had to say that sentence. Someone smack these guys one. As I wonder who the legal men are in this match, Tommy Dreamer pulls up the ring mats on the outside, exposing the concrete. But then Cross tosses him face first into the ring post. Cross ties his tie around Dreamer's neck and gives him a hip toss. Edwards and Cross are on the top rope, but Edwards hits a hurricanrana, but then Moose breaks up the pin. Dreamer's looking for a DDT now, but he can keep looking, and then Cross looks for the Cross jacket. He can also keep looking, because Dreamer catches Cross with a kick to the nutsack. Dreamer soon recovers a strike from Cross with a big cutter to take down our killer. He's not down long though, and Cross catches the kendo stick shot from Dreamer over Doomsday, and then he falls to the outside. Moose picks up the kendo stick, but this allows Eddie Edwards to roll up Moose and pick up the three for his team. Cross immediately grabs Edwards and puts him in the Cross jacket, and then throws him to Moose for a spear. They soon after powerbomb slap nuts into the apron, and Moose and Cross look constipated. They're also bad losers. They might not have won the match, but they definitely won the war. I'll give it a C. Match 7, Impact, Killer Cross versus Tommy Dreamer. Cross and Dreamer start with a test of strength between the two, which is quite frankly laughable. It eventually ends with a running crossbody from Tommy, which is a lot more believable. Dreamer cracks open a water bottle and takes a chug, and Cross lands Dreamer on his balls on the barricade, spitting the water out. Killer Cross starts distracting the referee so Moose can get in and choke on Dreamer. Killer Cross traps Dreamer's arm behind his back and clobbers him with a lariat. Now Cross climbs to the top rope, but Tommy gives him a smack and then a big superplex to follow after. Cross and Dreamer continue to wail away on each other with some strikes, but then Dreamer walks into a big strike of his own. Dreamer with a bionic elbow to counter Cross's suplex and a big cutter to take him down. Cross looks for the Cross jacket, but Dreamer gives Cross a kick to the nutsack. Moose runs into the ring, but Dreamer gives both Moose and Cross a DDT. Cross hits the Doomsday, but doesn't go for a pin right away. Instead, he powers Tommy up for another Doomsday, and then the match ends by referee decision. If it was my decision, I'd have let him keep going. Moose gets in the ring and starts stomping on the hardcore icon, and then Cross has the Cross jacket on Dreamer. It was a unique way to win the match, but before it, it was just kind of middle of the road, like a dead toad. It's a D. Match 8, Impact. Killer Cross and Moose versus Valabar and KM. Moose and KM will kick it off. Cross tags in and he gets taken down by KM with some punches, but Cross is able to overpower him with some unprotected forearms. 
Oh, for big diving chop on cross, then he gets steamrolled once or twice. It was definitely twice. Him dives onto his opponents on the outside, and then soon after, Bar hits a diving close on a moose and cross to the floor. Bar splashes cross against the rope. Cross is going into killer instinct mode. Bar gets distracted by moose, then gets laid out by cross for big lariat. Carrying cross gives a beautiful smile to Kem on the ropes, and then grabs Bar's hand for a tag, but then locks in an arm bar. But it's soon foiled when Bar gets a rope break. Cross sets Bar up for a forearm, but a fella Bar is able to counter with a Samoan drop, which I was pretty okay with. I'm starting to think these wrestlers are starting to get my message. It's been a while since I haven't been okay with a Samoan drop. Eddie Edwards appears from out of the crowd for the first time since Bound for Glory and he chokes Moose out of a kendo stick. Cross takes control as Bar falls to the floor and Cross locks in the Cross jacket on KM and makes him pass out, getting the win for his team. The match again was pretty bland, but he did win the match for his team by himself. Another D. Match 9, Impact, Final Hour. Killer Cross versus Johnny Impact for the Impact World Title. Cross and Impact chain wrestle to start out this world title encounter, which ends up quickly after Cross hits an Alabama slam on Impact. Johnny sits on the top rope and he elbows Cross to the floor to counter and he tries to take advantage, but Moose gets up on the apron for the distraction. Cross escapes to the outside. It's so weird seeing Moose playing so much second fiddle on this run. Cross and Johnny Impact are really laying in the shots to the face and the chops to the chest. Johnny goes for a corner attack, but Cross follows it and pushes him down to the floor from the top rope. Impact with some more of his cat-like reflexes to avoid Cross, but it's not good enough. Cross hits an overhead suplex to take down the world champion. Impact now tries to roll Cross up for a pin, but he only gets a two and then follows up with a sliding knee to the face. Killer Cross attempts an Alabama slam to the floor, but Impact's able to counter and he plants Cross on his head for pile driver. It's almost over again after the moonlight drive from Johnny Mundo, but Killer Cross is able to kick out a two yet again. Johnny tries to look for a springboard, but Cross pushes him off. Impact lands on his feet, and then they begin to brawl up the ramp and onto the stage. Cross attempts a power bomb on Johnny on the metal floor, and he marches all the way back to the ring with a razor's edge, tossing Impact into the ring. Somehow Impact's fine and he slides with a kick to the face of Cross, who then dangles by his legs on the bottom rope, so Johnny gives him a stomp for his chest. Johnny now dives off the top rope with a countdown to Impact, but Killer Cross is still fighting and he kicks out too. He's almost been beaten a lot of times in this one. Cross finally does something good and he suckers Impact in and hits a gut wrench suplex, and then he rolls over and gives Johnny a powerball. Cross jacket is inbound, but Impact rolls out of it and gives him a super kick. Cross grabs Impact around his neck, but then Impact uses his athleticism to hit a Huracarana and then hits the Starship Pain on Cross to retain the title. I'm going to give this a B, a really good match between these two. I would have just liked to see Cross do a little bit more. Impact mostly dominated him and beat him multiple times, but it was a good match. Match 10, Impact. Killer Cross versus Trevor Lee, who makes the girls pee. Cross and Trevor work out some chain wrestling for the first minute or so until Trevor gives Cross a kick to the chest and then he gets caught by Cross with an exploder. Cross starts stepping on Trevor's face on the ropes. Big Northern Light suplex, which he then bridges over and lifts Trevor Lee up with a doomsday, and then soon after Cross ends the match with the Cross jacket. I mean, nothing happened, it was just a squash match. But wait, Cross asks for the microphone and he stands in the ring. Cross introduces himself with 10 matches in. Cross basically wishes Johnny and Pat luck at homecoming, but then Cross starts doubting if Johnny has what it takes. It seems he's not getting through to Johnny. Cross gets out the ring and grabs a nerd at ringside and threatens to break his pencil neck if he doesn't listen to what he says. Now Cross pulls out a brick from under the ring. And what the hell is that doing under there anyway? Cross forces the ring nerd to hold the brick against Lee's face in the corner. And then Cross full force breaks the brick with a punch to Lee's face. Cross says that he will be watching Johnny and then Perk screams at the camera. I was going to shove this match, but that segment at the end was gold. Any match where there's a brick in it is going to be a highlight for me. I do also like how the killer aspect of Cross's character is starting to get shown. So his character work's improving and there was a brick in the match. Let's give it a B. Match 11. Impact. Killer Cross versus Johnny Impact in a no DQ match. Killer Cross is in street clothes for this match. He looks like he really means business here. Johnny Impact just wears his normal gear though. Cross and Impact start out the match with exchanging forearm and then Cross tosses Johnny away with a suplex. Cross starts firing away with body shots on Morrison in the corner and then he sets him up on the top rope and clotheslines him to the floor. Cross follows Johnny to the outside and gives him a super kick and then starts slamming his head against the metal barricade. He then sets Cross up against another barricade and gives him a running knee. Impact heads under the ring and sets up a table close by as Killer Cross writhes in agony. Impact is a thief and steals a chair at ringside but he shouldn't have bothered because Cross punches the chair into Impact and knocks him down. Killer Cross wraps the chair from before around Johnny's neck and then slams him neck first into the ring post. 
Once again, Killer Cross makes the referee watch the brutality of a sick and twisted grin on his face. Cross looks for the cross jacket, but Johnny backs up into the barricade, but this just causes Johnny to get planted on his nutsack and then smacked in the back with a chair. Cross brings the ring stairs all the way to the other side of the ring and then sets Johnny's head up on top and tries to give him a concerto, but Impact moves out the way. Johnny Impact takes advantage with a chair and then he starts asking all the fans for chairs. Then Impact starts stacking the chairs on top of the downed cross and then climbs to the top of the stairs with the chair in hand and then delivers a moonsault onto the pile of chairs. Awesome. Cross rises out of the chairs like Jason Voorhees from Crystal Lake and he starts helping Johnny toss all the chairs into the ring with a menacing glare as he orders Johnny to follow him into the ring. Both wrestlers grab chairs and we have a chair sword fight but they soon disarm and start throwing hands. Impact loves his chair though and he sets it up in the middle of the ring and super kicks Cross to sit him down into the chair. Cross continues to laugh as Impact throws a chair right into his face. Johnny Impact pulls Cross over to the corner and sets up more chairs on top of him. Impact uses one of the chairs and starts hitting Cross with the weapon on the floor. Impact climbs to the top rope with a chair in hand once again, but all of a sudden, Loose appears and he pushes Impact off the top to the floor through a table. Killer Cross looks for the cross jacket and Impact is still struggling to breathe and he eventually passes out to the pain. Killer Cross has defeated the Impact World Champion, but what a shame the title wasn't on the line. This match was really entertaining, best match so far. Lots of great spots and the brutality was there, not to mention how we got to see much more of the psychopath character we have here. It's a rare ring of the Hawk A. Well done. Match 12, Impact. Killer Cross vs Johnny Impact for the Impact World title. Johnny Impact rolls Cross out of a headlock into a knee strike into a reverse leg sweep combination and delivers a handstand leg drop for a one count. Johnny looks for the countdown to Impact early on, but Cross counters and gives Johnny a running knee. Cross with some Muay Thai knees and then a gut wrench suplex, which he then rolls over into a powerbomb, but Johnny recovers with a hurricanrana. Impact is sliding around in the ring and he slides out the corner with some quick reflexes and then tries to springboard. Moose grabs his leg and then Moose gets a drop kick from Impact, but then Cross takes advantage of a kick to the back. Cross batters up Impact for a little while with some kicks and punches until he plants him with a DDT for a two count. Impact sets Cross up for a tornado DDT, but Cross catches him and tosses him with a Northern Light suplex. The yay boo punch exchange from our wrestlers now until Impact staggers Cross with a boot and then jumps off the ropes for an Impact kick. Then he runs with a knee strike, but he only gets a two. Cross looks for the Cross jacket, but Impact is able to roll out of it. But then Cross doesn't let go and he transitions into a knee bar, and after wearing him down, he locks the Cross jacket in again. Impact is able to grab the rope for the rope break. Johnny Impact responds with a kick to the back of the head and a sliding German. Cross is playing possum though and he tries to roll up Impact, but then Johnny gets payback with a knee. Johnny Impact with a split-legged springboard spear. What? But Cross is able to get his foot on the rope. Starship Pain crash landing and then Cross for the third time looks for the Cross jacket. And as he has the match in the bag, Brian Cage runs in from the crown, tries to ruin the match and he gives Moose an F5. Cross makes it back to his feet and gives Cage a doomsday, but then Cage gets right up and gives Cross a discus clothesline. The match has been thrown out of this point if you hadn't already guessed. The match was alright, not their best encounter, but also the no contest ending was kind of pointless. Why did this match follow the amazing match? It should have been the other way around, so I'll give it a see and move on. Match 13, Impact. Killer Cross and Moose versus Brian Cage and Johnny Impact. Johnny Impact and Moose will start it out. Cross comes in after a double kip up and Moose gets tired and tags out. Killer Cross and Brian Cage come face to face and they start exchanging shoulder tackles for test of power, which concludes with a Turtle Will Hurricane on Cross. And then Impact tags in for Tope Atomico. Moonlight Drive on Cross, but it's only a two count. Cross catches Impact, gives him a gut wrench power bomb, and then tags out to Moose. Cross holds Impact's hand out for the tag and then pulls Impact in and gives him the three amigos. Cross eventually gets a hot tag from Moose and locks Impact in the Dragon Sleeper and tries to manoeuvre into a suplex but Impact plants him down for DDT. Cross connects with a roundhouse on Cage but then he eats a headbutt and then a German but then Cross gets right back up but then he's back down again as he's sat on his ass with a spine buster. Cross eats a super kick from Impact and then gives Moose an Inziguri and then 619's Cross right into Cage's arms and Impact goes for the Impact kick but he hits Cage by mistake. Brian Cage with a discus close on him Cross as he tries to hit Impact. Moose gives him a spear and gets the win for him and Cross. This match was pretty forgettable. Cross was really the least important person in this match and he didn't have much to work with. At least he's showing more and more different moves each week so his offense doesn't get stale. I always appreciate that on Ring of the Hawk so I'll give him a C. Match 14, Impact on Cage. Killer Cross versus Moose versus Brian Cage versus Johnny Impact. It's a world title four-way match. 
Everyone starts out exchanging strikes in the ring, and Impact goes sailing over the top onto Moose. Cross takes a big drop kick from the machine, and then the cage delivers a beautiful tope con hilo onto all three of his opponents. Killer Cross and Moose get back into the ring at the same time, start double teaming the world champion, and they plant him with a double powerbomb. Moose tries to go for the pin, but Cross breaks it up. Moose just doesn't understand that this is a fatal four way, and he's teaming with Cross. Moose and Cross are working together, they hit a double powerbomb on Cage, but then Moose tries to roll Cross up for the two. Cross dumps in his nappy of anger at that move, but then soon calms down and hugs it out of his best friend Moose. Well that's what you think, as his face changes to the camera and gives Moose a suplex. Cross looks for a choke slam onto the impact, but impact the onslaught of kicks and strikes, and then he hits the moonlight drive on Cross. Moose is back and does a kick to the nutsack on Johnny, and then Moose starts delivering drop kicks to all of his opponents in the corner, except Johnny who stops him. But then Moose overpowers him with a choke bomb for a two. Brian Cage goes for a German suplex, and Cross and Moose are in the human sense speed, and Cage successfully suplexes both opponents. Cross gets back to his feet and dodges a discus lariat from Cage, gives him the doomsday, but Moose gives Cross a pump kick to stop him. Impact is the first man back to his feet, and he climbs to the top rope. Moose stops him though and looks for a superplex, but then Brian Cage follows suit and joins him on the second rope. Killer Cross with the opportunistic offense, and he hits the Tower of Doom on all three opponents. He goes over to the world champion for a two count, but he immediately transitions into a cross arm breaker. Moose sees what's going on and he locks in a figure four on Johnny. So it's a double submission. Wait, no, a triple submission as Cage locks in a dragon sleeper on Cross. They all break their submissions and Cross moves on to counter Cage into a Northern Light suplex for the kickout. Killer Cross with a shot into the corner on Cage and he catapults impact into Cage sitting in the corner. Moose looks for a clothesline on Cross, but he counters and gives a doomsday to Moose. Cross looks for the knockout elbow, but impact runs onto the ropes of the impact kick. Cross still has some fight left in him. Cross with another doomsday, this time on Cage, who pops right back up to his feet and lays Cross out of a discus clothesline. Everyone's hitting their finishers, Cage hits the drill crawl on Cross, but Impact beats Cage Turk with a pin and he's still the world champion. This match was pretty good, lots of back and forth chaos throughout and it had a pretty cool ending, let's give it a B. Match 15, Impact, Killer Cross vs Moose for the number one contendership for the world title. In a promo before our announced matchup, Cross calls Moose a defiler, a betrayer, you son of a bitch. He also calls Moose toxic and he insults Moose's outfits. Moose gets very defensive and they have a heated argument about their favourite designer. Doesn't seem like something you'd expect a psychopath to be done. Moose gives Cross a cheap shot mid promo. Johnny and Pat calls for a referee and we have an impromptu match on the way. Cross and Moose avoid each other's strikes in the corner until Moose gives Cross a smack. Moose kicks up off a shoulder tackle and talks shit to Cross, but then he gets a big elbow to the mouth. Killer Cross traps Moose in the corner and Moose pulls the ref in front of him for the distraction. And then Moose kicks Cross right in the dick. He tries to roll him up, but it's not a free. I thought double K like pain, and that's got to be the worst pain imaginable for a man. He should be a mecha cross by this point. Moose threatens the official, and then Cross kicks Moose in his cock and taters and gets a two count on him. Moose and Cross go nose to nose and start firing away of hammer-like strikes. Moose seems to win that when he clotheslines Cross to the floor. Cross and Moose start brawling on the outside and they make their way towards the announce tables. Johnny Impact is there and he throws down his headset and gets across his face. And then a cup of coffee is thrown. Cross manages to avoid a pump kick from Moose which hits the champion. Don Callis is really upset about his coffee being destroyed. This is the last straw for Johnny Impact who gets in the ring and starts fighting both competitors. That doesn't work for him as Moose and Cross quickly overpower the champion and now they're back on the same page? The machine storms out to the ring and starts laying out our forest animal. This match could have been more, I think there was a missed opportunity considering how much of a hoss fight you could have had between these two. But at least there could be some world title implications, I'll give it a D. Match 16, Impact. Killer Cross and Moose vs Johnny Impact and Brian Cage. Cross and Brian Cage start exchanging forearms to start out and then a fake kick from Cage on the ropes. Brian Cage and Johnny Impact with some great double teaming on Moose for a few minutes on the early going. And then Cross gets into the ring and he eats a super kick and a German suplex combination from his opponents and we cut to commercial. When we come back, Cage and Impact have an Inzaguri flatliner combination on Cross and the two. Impact looks for the countdown to Impact but Cross counters and then he eats a kick from Johnny. Moose knocks Cage down to the outside as Cross threatens to throw Cage face first into the ring pole whilst the ref's back is turned. Cross picks up the world title belt and he hits Cage with it. The referees are checking on Johnny Impact as Moose looks to end the match. We see that Cage has been busted open again. Cross tosses Cage to Moose and he starts opening up the cut of Cage with some punches. Brian Cage tries to crawl to the corner to tag in Johnny, but Cross takes advantage and starts stomping on Cage. Killer Cross powers Cage up with an exploder suplex and then tags in Moose, who starts going blow for blow with Cage. Double down now after a double discus clothesline. When they get back to their feet, Brian Cage stops Cross in his tracks and gives him an F5. Oh no. Human urinal Tyre Valkyrie makes her way to ringside and starts yelling at Brian Cage. Killer Cross takes advantage with the Doomsday. 
Cross pulls Cage up into a straight jacket choke and Moose spears Brian Cage, which sends Cross into the cross jacket. And Brian Cage passes out to the blood loss. This match was not half bad, and that ending with that tag team finish looked really cool. It's a shame it took so long for them to work that out. Let's give it a B. I've got really high hopes for this run. If we can get a couple more A's, we're looking at a new champion here. Match 17, Impact Against All Odds 2019. Killer Cross versus Brian Cage. The previous match was Ty Valkyrie versus Jordan Grace. Out of nowhere, Killer Cross has a sleeper hold on Cage and starts spraying him into the ring post. We start the match up as Cross starts stomping Cage in the corner. Brian Cage with a big back body drop on Cross and he starts with the trap lariat. Cross with a Northern Light suplex out the corner now and the machine kicks out at two though. Cross transitions that into an armbar, but Cage stomping Cross's face to escape. Cage catches Cross with the Bandera spot into a kick and tries for the apron superplex, but Cross grabs Cage's arm and wraps it around the top rope. He's working on Cage's arm around the ropes for a while, eventually Cage gets him off. Killer Cross sets Cage up for an Irish whip, but Cage hops onto the second rope and botches a tornado D T on Cross as we cut to the advert break. I don't blame them. When we come back, big super kick on Cross there, discus lariat. Cross gets right back up and locks in the Cross jacket. Cage gets out of the hole by slamming himself into the corner and then hits a power slam on Cross and then follows it with a springboard moonsault for a two. Brian Cage only has one arm and he can't hit the drill crawl, but Cross hits the doomsday for a nothing count. Killer Cross dumps this nappy of fear and anger and runs into a pop-up powerbomb, not once but twice, and then a discus clothesline to take him out again. But surprisingly, Killer Cross kicks out at 2.9. Brian Cage with the F5 on Cross, and Johnny Impact sneaks down to ringside and puts Cross's foot on the rope. Cross gets checked on by the referee. Human urinal tire Valkyrie slides into the ring, gives Cage a low blow. Killer Cross gets back up to his feet and hits the Doomsday on Cage, and then hits it again, but Cage kicks out at 2. Wait, the fans of the ring crew thought it was a 2 count, but the referee called for the bell. Then there's some confusion as no one listens to the referee, but everyone agrees that Cage kicked out. Killer Cross is the winner of the matchup, despite the obvious botched pinfall. Killer Cross starts walking away as Cage starts getting decimated by Johnny and Tyre. The match had too much going on and it had a good beginning but the outside interference and botches were really bad. It's a D. Match 18. Impact. Killer Cross versus Willie Mack. Cross and Mack feel each other out for a little bit with some Mack wrestling until Mack gives Cross a smack. Cross responds with a running boot to Mack which knocks him into the corner and Chocolate Thunder starts going on the attack. Killer Cross recovers with a running knee to the Mack but only gets a two count. Cross tells Mack to stay down and when Mack kicks out he starts grinding his elbow into Mack's face. Willie Mack dodges a roundhouse kick from Cross but then floats over into a sling blade on Cross for the kick out. Mai Tai kicks the face from Cross and follows it with a Northern Lights toss. Cross starts breaking Mac down as Chocolate Thunder starts to rumble and power up and he starts firing away and it's, and it's the return of the Mac with a German suplex. Cross gets right back up and then Mac throws him away of an exploder suplex for the two. Willie hits a drive-by punch in the corner and a big pump kick. Cross gets a face full of ass from the Mac. Willie looks for a stunner but Cross counters and pushes him off and then Willie hits a Samoan drop which, again, I'm okay with. He then follows that up with a standing moonsault, but Cross expertly positions himself into the cross jacket. Willie Mack passes out. The match was short but sweet. Some cool moves, and these two actually have better chemistry than I thought they would. Let's give it a see. Match 19, Impact, Keller Cross vs Eddie Slapnut Edwards. Edwards storms the ring and immediately starts to get unprotected forearms to the back of the head. Edwards sidesteps Karen Cross, then gives Cross a suicide dive to the floor. Edwards gets a head of steam and dives onto Cross yet again. Edwards gives Cross a chop now, but Cross says no and tosses him with an exploder. Cross now have a knee to the gut and a lariat for a two count. Cross starts throwing some roundhouses to the chest, but Eddie keeps asking for more, and then he gets a third and goes down. But what was he expecting? Eddie quickly recovers and turns Cross inside out with a blue thunder bomb. Both men are now on the top rope and Eddie connects with a top rope Frankensteiner and then chops Cross down for a one count. Cross gets to his feet and eats a couple of elbows from Edwards and Eddie hits the Tiger Driver on Cross for a two count. Edwards grabs his stupid kendo stick. As he's out of ringside, Cross invites him back into the ring. Edwards gets sucked in and hit with the Doomsday for the victory. Penny the kendo stick cost Edwards the match and Cross basically just had a mid-card match encounter. After this match, Cross pulls Eddie up by his face with a kendo stick and gives him a roundhouse. Cross goes under the ring and has a zip tie in his mouth, and Cross ties both of his arms to the middle rope. Cross puts on a pair of black gloves as Slapner Edwards continues to yell at him. Cross looks to take a running swing with a kendo stick, but he stops. Cross looks to be shown remorse, but Edwards says, hit me. Killer Cross instead breaks Kenny the kendo stick in front of Edwards, and the gift given to Edwards by Tommy Dreamer has been destroyed. Okay, at least that was a little bit amusing, so I'll keep it out of the shove-it zone and give it a D. Match 20, Impact, Killer Cross versus Eddie Edwards in a street fight. Killer Cross is dressed up like Murphy from Robocop for this match. The last time Cross was in a no DQ setting, it was his best match. My expectations might be a little high for this one. Edwards disrobes off his jacket and storms down to ringside and they start brawling on the apron. 
The bell rings and Edwards gives Cross a dive to the outside. Edwards drops Cross on his back on the apron with a back suplex, not once but twice. Edwards now goes under the ring and starts loading the ring with weapons, but as he holds up the garbage can lid, Cross gives him a spear to the outside. Cross loads up the ring with two lunch trays and a trash lid and then tosses Edwards face first into the ring post. Edwards tries to respond with a dive, but Cross stops him in his tracks by tossing a trash can at him. Cross deadlifts Edwards up from the ropes, then gives him a brain buster. Killer Cross tries to throw a roundhouse at Eddie, but he's able to duck and give Cross a blue thunder bomb into the trash can. Edwards is now able to make the trash can lid smack off Cross's face, and then hits him even harder the second time. And then after the third shot, Cross finally goes down, but this only gets a two count for Eddie. Edwards pulls out a very medium sized ladder and throws it in the ring. Edwards takes a shot across with the lid, but and Cross locks the jacket on, but Edwards gets his hand on a serving tray and starts bashing Cross in the head with it. Killer Cross decides to play with some furniture. He brings two chairs into the ring and sets up a ladder as a bridge in between the chairs. Cross starts sticking his thumb in the previously injured eye of Edwards and then gives him a choke bomb through the ladder. Killer Cross starts filling the ring with steel chairs. He looks to end the match with a superplex. He can't do it though as Edwards gives Cross a headbutt and then a sunset flip power bomb into the parlor chairs. But the match isn't over as Killer Cross gets his shoulder up and he starts seething with rage. Edwards sets up a chair bridge once again and knocks Killer Silly with an elbow. Eddie tries to hit the tiger driver but Double K counters just drops Eddie head first on top of the chair bridge. Cross powers up Edwards and choke bombs him through the chair bridge as well. Doomsday on slap nuts and Eddie pulls out the black gloves from the last match. Cross tells Eddie he's gonna end him. For no reason whatsoever, the Sandman appears and hits Cross in the back for signature kendo stick. Edwards then smacks Cross with the Boston knee party for the free. Slap nuts wins. The match was a pretty decent hardcore encounter. The spots these guys took were pretty impressive. My only criticism is that the ending was kind of sudden. Let's give it a C. After the match, the Sandman gives Eddie Edwards a new kendo stick. God fucking damn it. Match 20 World Impact, Killer Cross vs the Sandman. The Sandman appears from the crowd during Killer Cross's entrance and we're underway. Sandman with the 10 punches in the corner on Cross. I guess this is no DQ as the Sandman starts firing away on Cross with the kendo stick. And then Cross ducks one strike and locks in the Cross jacket and the Sandman passes out. Well that was a waste of time. Alright, first shove it at the video, hopefully it's the only one. After the match, Slapnut Edwards saves his master by clotheslining Cross out the ring. Why is he his master if he's beaten so easily? Match 22, final match, Slammiversary 2019, Killer Cross vs Eddie Edwards in a first blood match. We kick off the match on the ramp as shots are taken with kendo sticks. Edwards knocks the face painted Cross to the outside and gives him a dive and starts taking some shots at the head of Cross. Eddie pulls a chair from under the ring and Killer Cross jump scares Eddie and gives him a choke bomb on the apron. The sound of that bump is brutal. Cross sets up Eddie for a forearm, but Edwards sends him away with an overhead belly to belly. Then Cross throws him with a suplex of his own, and then Eddie with a German and a flurry of forearms from both men. Edwards tries to go for a dive on Cross to the floor, but instead tosses a chair right into the face of Edwards. Double K sets slap nuts up on the apron and gives him a gut wrench suplex to the floor on top of chairs. Cross now looks to use a chair on Edwards, but Eddie avoids some chair shots and then tosses another chair right into the face of Cross. Edwards has a chair in hand, but Cross catches and throws the chair away, and then Edwards dodges a roundhouse. Cross gets hit with a blue thunder bomb. Edwards tries to get something going in the ring, but Cross just grabs him and sort of throws him into the corner. Both wrestlers now are on the top rope, and Cross looks for a doomsday to the floor, but Edwards hits an elbow and Cross is set up on the top rope, and then Edwards dives off the springboard with the Boston knee party, but obviously doesn't go for the pin. It's a first blood match, don't grin. Edwards finds his best friend and takes a swing. Cross locks in the cross jack, but Eddie's able to take a few shots of his best friend and they both sort of fall to the floor. They continue brawling to the outside. Eddie gives Cross an elbow and then drops Cross with a tiger driver on the floor. Killer Cross stays on his knees and then Eddie gives Cross a Boston knee party to the back of the head and then gives him another. But Cross still isn't going down or bleeding. Eddie picks up Kenny and looks to hit Cross a bit, but he says, I'm sorry, I love you. And then he snaps Kenny over his knee and starts jabbing at Cross's head at the broken end of Kenny. This does make Cross bleed and Edwards picks up the win. The visual of Cross after this match with the blood and paint all over his face is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. The match was good, but it's kinda hard to judge a first blood match. That ending was pretty storybook. So let's end it with a positive note and give him a good B. That's it, game over, very impressive. So the only thing left to find out if Killer Cross can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. It was a mixed bag, there was a lot of wrestling in here, I wasn't expecting to see so much from such a big guy. There was great character work and storytelling in the last half of the matches, and he never slapped on any of the moves in these matches. Problem was a lot of the time he wasn't the main focus, and there was a lot of outside interference to help him win his matches when he was supposed to be booked as a monster. But overall the matches were mostly entertaining, and I can see why he'd end up being signed by NXT less than a year after his last Impact match. So we're going to give him a final grade of a high C, and if you don't agree with that, I'll break your knee, your face, your head and your spleen.